Hello, Jace with Popcorn Recap here. Today we'll talk about a 2004 Thai horror movie called Shudder. This is definitely a scary, scary horror movie, so proceed with caution if you decide to watch it. Before we start, be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you dig the summary. At the movie's beginning, we see Tung together with his girlfriend Jane, celebrating with their friends. They get drunk and poke fun at each other's life. After the celebration, Jane drives because Tung is too drunk. On their way home, Tung starts flirting with Jane, causing her to take her eyes off the road. Suddenly, a woman appears on the road and the car hits her. Jane loses control and crashes the vehicle into a nearby signpost. After recovering from the crash, Jane and Tung look behind and see the woman lying on the road. Worried, Jane tries to get out of the car, but a nervous Tung stops her. Unwilling to expose Jane to more problems, Tung forces her to drive off and ignore the victim. The next day, Tung goes back to work, taking photos at a graduation ceremony. While panning the camera for a shot, he sees a ghost amongst the graduates. After checking again, the figure is no longer there. He brushes it off and continues with his photography work. Later, Tung notices Jane looking depressed and decides to comfort her. Jane calls him out for acting as if nothing happened and tells him that she has trouble sleeping. Jane believes they should have at least checked the victim and expresses her guilt for the incident. The next day, Tung picks up his prints and finds some of them have white stains. Ew, no, not the kind of stain you're thinking about. He asks the developer if something is wrong with his processor. To prove it's not his fault, the developer checks the film's negatives and shows that they have the same stains. Later that day, Jane arrives at their apartment and enters Tung's studio. She finds it locked, but sees a shadow inside. Suddenly, the doorknob starts shaking violently, and the door opens. Jane enters the studio and finds nothing except a running faucet. When Jane is about to turn the faucet off, she sees a woman's head slowly rising from the water-filled sink. The panicked Jane tries to get out of the studio, but the door won't open. When the ghost reaches out her hand and screams, Jane wakes up from the nightmare. If it were me, I'd be out on the streets the moment that doorknob started shaking. Later that night, Tung comforts Jane after learning what happened. He then shows her the stained photos and says something might be wrong with his camera. While browsing them, Jane notices one with a silhouette of a woman. She now thinks that the woman in the accident is starting to haunt them. The next day, the couple checks for reports about the accident. They discover there is no record of the accident happening from any hospital or police station. Jane believes the accident and the photo stains are related, but Tung denies it and blames it on the camera. Later, Tung works on the prints again and sees the woman's silhouette. After taking a closer look at it, the woman's head turns to face him. When he takes the print to the developer the next day, Tung gets mocked for believing ghosts exist. Meanwhile, Jane is bothered by the recent events and leaves her class early. She then finds a newspaper stall selling magazines about ghosts and takes one. Back at the studio, Tung notices Jane arriving and tells her that she's early. He then goes to answer the landline outside. To his surprise, the one calling is Jane. Shocked by the revelation, Tung drops the phone, slowly returns to the studio, and finds no one inside. Sometime later, Tung starts experiencing neck pain, and Jane tells him to see a doctor. The couple visits the publishing company of the magazine Jane found earlier. It turns out, the company is faking the photos they show in their magazine. After talking with the company's manager, he shows the couple the real deal. He gives them a photo and points out the blurry image that resembles a woman. The manager says the image resembles his mother and reveals they took the photo after she passed away. The manager believes that sometimes ghosts come back because they long for their loved ones. He then gives the couple an album full of haunted photos. The manager adds that these ghosts haunt the photographs because they have a message to send. A skeptical tongue then asks how they can be sure that the photos in the album are real. The manager then points out that it's impossible to fake photos taken from a Polaroid camera. Jane then asks how to know what the ghost wants, and the manager says the clues are in the picture itself. Later at work, the lights in Tung's studio go out. He calls for his assistant, but he doesn't answer. Suddenly, the cameras start flashing rapidly at Tung. He panics and continues to ask who is doing all these things. He briefly sees a woman's face before he turns on the light and discovers that he's alone. Tung goes to see a doctor for his neck pain. The nurse notices something odd while taking Tung's weight, so she restarts the weighing process. Eventually, Tung learns that nothing is physically wrong with him. Maybe he broke the scale, like I always do. While getting his prescription medicine, he hears a voice saying he's a liar. He looks at the pharmacist, but it's not her saying those words. Scared, Tung leaves in a hurry and without grabbing his medications. 
That night, Tung examines his haunted photos again while watching a documentary of how praying mantises mate. Interesting kink he has. Frustrated, he knocks the photos off the table. The next day, Tung goes to pick up Jane at her school. He calls out to her, but she doesn't answer. After getting closer, he sees Jane spitting blood. When she turns around, Jane's full-on emo makeup scares the living daylights out of her boyfriend. Tung wakes up and discovers he's just having a nightmare. Shortly after that, Tung feels someone's presence inside his apartment. He looks around and finds his friend Tan looking depressed. Tan freaks out and asks for the photos that Tung hid. After calming him down, Tung tries calling Tan's wife. When he checks on his friend again, he is no longer there. Later, Jane arrives at home and sees that Tung is looking for something. She asks what he's looking for, but he makes up an excuse that he's just cleaning. Jane then drops the haunted photos, and when she picks them up, she notices something. She discovers that the white stain seems to come from a room in a building found in the background. She checks the rest of the haunted photos and sees the same thing. Jane goes to the school the next day and takes pictures of the room using a Polaroid camera. The first photo she takes shows nothing, so Jane decides to enter the room. Once inside, Jane continues taking pictures, and all of them revealed nothing. She takes one last photo and accidentally drops it while drying the Polaroid film. When she picks it up, Jane sees a silhouette of a woman. Scared, she decides to run outside but stops after seeing a picture frame fall in front of her. She examines the photo inside the frame and recognizes the girl in it as the one they hit during the car accident. Later that day, Tung visits the apartment of Tan and discovers it's a mess. Meanwhile, Jane continues to investigate the woman she found in the picture frame. She discovers a picture of the woman and Tung together. Back at Tan's apartment, Tung learns that the wedding photos of his friend show signs of being haunted too. Then, Tung suddenly sees his friend jumping off the balcony. He screams after seeing his friend's body on top of a car in the parking lot below. Later, Tan's wife arrives and asks if Tung's gang has gone crazy. It turns out that all of them, except Tung, have taken their lives. Inside their car later, Jane decides to confront her boyfriend about the photo she discovered. Believing the girl is the one haunting them, Jane asks Tung to explain his relationship with her. Tung reveals the girl's name is Nader, and that he knew her in college. We learn that Nader is a loner, and Tung decided to date her secretly out of pity. She seems to love him a lot, enough that she's willing to buy him an expensive camera. Unfortunately, Tung ends their relationship and leaves Nader in a bloody mess. Tung tells Jane that after he ended the relationship, he never saw Nader again. Realizing that his life is now on the line, Tung gets scared and Jane comforts him. They decide to visit Nader's home and check how she's doing. The couple stops by a gas station on their way to Nader's hometown. Tung goes to the men's toilet to relieve himself. He then notices somebody occupying the next toilet cubicle. When he reaches out for the toilet paper, he sees it's not enough and asks the person next door for some. Tung sees a hand reach out from the adjacent cubicle to hand the toilet paper, and it belongs to a woman. He panics and goes to check who is inside the other toilet. Tung kicks the door and finds a ladyboy. The surprised ladyboy responds by asking Tung if he's willing to wait. Later, Tung sees Nader on the road, so he panics and steps on the gas. Shortly after that, Nader appears on top of the hood and Tung loses control of the car. Fortunately, he stops the car from crashing this time. In the morning, the couple arrives at Nader's hometown. While asking for directions, Tung notices a young monk looking at him as if he's scared. When they arrive at Nader's house, her mother greets them after learning they're her friends. Inside, the mother tells them that Nader is resting and she'll be happy to see her friends. When she leaves, Tung and Jane sneak upstairs to Nader's room. The couple finds Nader's decaying body and gets caught by her mother. Shortly after that, the couple tries to convince Nader's mother to cremate her daughter. They show her the haunted photos and tell her that Nader's spirit is restless. After a while, Nader's mother agrees to their request and holds a proper funeral for her daughter. During the wake, a man reveals what happens to Nader. It turns out that after returning from Bangkok, Nader overdosed on pills. Her mother brought Nader in time to the hospital and she recovered. After that, Nader took her own life by jumping from the hospital's roof. After hearing the story, Tung starts to feel a haunting presence. When he turns around to look, Nader's hand grabs his shoulder. Spooked, he stands up and finds no one behind him. Later that night, Jane comforts Tung after seeing he's struggling to sleep. Tung wakes up before dawn and gets haunted by Nader's ghost. Horrified, he runs out of the room, but Nader continues to chase him. He goes down the staircase but starts running in a loop on the same floor. Eventually, he sees Jane, but when he approaches her, she changes into Nader. In desperation, Tung goes out of a nearby window and tries to climb down while the rain pours. 
When he looks up, he sees Nader slowly climbing down towards him. While rushing to get away from Nader, Tung slips and falls. He wakes up in a hospital in the morning with Jane beside him. They attend Nader's funeral that day and return to the city with relief that hauntings are over. Sometime later, Jane picks up photos at their favorite processing shop. While examining them, she sees some that show Nader's silhouette in their living room. When she arrives home, Jane flips the bundled photos, animating the image they contain. She sees Nader moving toward a shelf in the living room. Jane examines the bookshelf and sees a hidden envelope with film negatives inside. She goes to the studio to process the film and gets shocked by what she sees. The photo shows Tung's gang pinning Nader on the floor. It turns out that they forced themselves on her. Tung then arrives at the studio, and Jane confronts them about the photo. Jane then learns that Tung was present when the incident happened. To prevent Nader from reporting them, Tan asks him to take a photo so they can blackmail her. Tung is unable to decline after Tan uses the friend card on him. While Nader begs for his help, Tung looks away and takes the photo using the camera she bought him. After hearing enough about what happened, Jane leaves. Later, Tung sees the Polaroid photo that Jane took earlier. He grabs his Polaroid camera and starts photographing every corner of the apartment. After nothing comes up, he throws the camera on the floor. Suddenly, the camera takes a photo of Tung. He goes to pick it up and gets shocked by what it reveals. He recalls his neck pain, weighing too heavy for his body, and the young monk looking at him. It turns out that the photo shows Nader sitting on Tung's shoulders. Nader covers his eyes, and Tung panics after losing his vision. He ends up jumping out of the building after that. Jane visits him sometime later, saddened by his state. The movie ends after showing a reflection of Tung with Nader still on his back. Creepy. My neck is actually starting to hurt a little. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.